What's up guys, I'm back and today we're going to compare and compra contrast college soccer and by that I mean NCAA and AI um, to Football Academy Madrid. And let's begin with the college soccer within the United States and let's begin with the pros. The first pro I have is that you get to represent your school. Um, you have a fan base, people that you take classes with, attend the games, uh, and it feels really good to wear the, the logo of your school and represent your school, for sure. Number two is that there is a possibility of scholarships, although the numbers show that not that many players actually do receive scholarships for their sporting ability in the sport of soccer. Other sports do receive higher numbers of scholarships. And then the gear. Most of the gear is run off from deals from the football team, for example. Um, if Ohio State's football team signs with Nike, and then the soccer team will also get great gear from Nike. Although this is mostly for bigger schools, and by bigger schools I mean Division I schools, and the rest of the nation um, pays for their gear basically just the same as anybody else does. Next thing is facilities. These colleges and universities have invested a lot of money in the training room and in the fields and the sporting um, facilities in general, as well as a lot of runoff again from revenue generating sports like American football and basketball at the Division I schools leads to a, a lot of state-of-the-art uh, facilities. The next pro is the, the college culture. If what you want to do is go to American uh, football games, um, NCAA basketball games, and go to the homecoming parade, then that's available for you in the United States, obviously. Although I would say, um, if you're in Madrid, you can go to Real Madrid basketball games and watch professional basketball just the same. Okay, so now let's talk about the cons. And the number one con for me of American college soccer is the season. It's an incredibly short season from August to November. Um, if you get to the championship, you're looking at December. So you're looking at a season of two and a half to three months. Now in that two and a half and three months, you compete in about 20 to 25 games, and then you're done. Um, you're no longer training in the spring until the spring semester gets halfway underway. And then your training is limited by the rules of the NCAA and NAI. And you're not competing. You're not competing in anything meaningful, certainly. Even if you can play one scrimmage game, two scrimmage games, you're not competing in a league. You're not competing in, in anything that, that matters. Secondly, due to the short season, due to the incredibly short preseason, coaches and teams tend not to develop a system of play that's too complicated. And what generally happens is coaches play in a way that they're hoping the other team is going to make a mistake and you can capitalize off of it. And what I mean by this is the ball goes to the center back, to the outside back, he kicks it over the top, hopefully the other team's defense bungles the play and you score. That's how most teams play. They play in a way that they're hoping that the other team makes a mistake rather than creating a system of play that's going to develop a player to be able to play at the next level. So basically there's no long-term development plan for the individual player and the teams because coaches are trying to win that year in order to recruit for the next recruiting class. The next big thing that's a major con for me in the American college system is the roster size. Most teams are carrying over 30 players nowadays and administrators are asking coaches to carry even more players now, yet there's no secondary competition for these players to play in. And what I mean is some teams organize some JV scrimmages, but again, that's not a real competition and it's just a couple of scrimmages. It's not a full season for the JV team. Um, so if you're not in the top 18, top 16, you don't play and if you don't play, you don't develop. Okay, next con of the American college system is the lack of mobility. Let's say you're a Division II team, Division III team, but your squad is actually really talented, coaches put together a good system of play, and you win the national championship, or you even just win your conference and your conference tournament. Okay, you get a trophy the next year, 
back to competing in Division 3, Division 2, back to competing in your same conference. There's no mobility upwards, right? That's a collective mobility. And then there's the individual mobility. Let's say you weren't really scouted to a Division 1 school, so you go NAIA or you go to NCAA Division 3, Division 2, and you, you kill it your first year. You, you play a lot of games, you play very well, um, and you want to transfer into a Division 1 school. Well, the NCAA rules um, will most likely make you sit out a full season. Okay, so if you want to have mobility, the NCAA is not for you. And then lastly, with the jam-packed schedule, the short season, if you, for example, roll your ankle and you have to miss two weeks, you could miss five matches in that two-week time span. All right, five matches of a 20-game season is 25% of your season gone from one rolled ankle. Look, that's all the pros and cons I got for American Soccer. If you have an idea of more pros or cons, leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel for more videos talking about European soccer, talking about American college soccer. And follow our Instagram, Football Academy Madrid. Check out our website, www.fam2021.com. And see you on the next one.